we're about to visit a world scientists believe could exist in our galaxy. The Blue Moon. It's got blue seas, it's got clouds in the atmosphere. And the continents are cloaked with something, maybe some strangely coloured vegetation. I'd love to see a world like that. on the blue moon. Giant forests more than a kilometer high dominate the landscape. This is a volatile world. Fires ignited by lightning and fueled by the high oxygen levels will be an extreme risk. Its dense atmosphere is like a gas ocean, and it will support some of the strangest aliens. Aliens that float, glide, and fly. The sorts of life forms on Blue Moon I think would be totally fascinating. When we look in the atmosphere, there's a sort of almost greenish haze. It's almost like a plankton. But beyond that, there are these immense shapes. Are they gliding? Are they flying? All we can tell is they must be very large animals indeed. It's far, far beyond anything we're familiar with. This is a genuinely alien world. is the setting for an extraordinary story of how extraterrestrial life could survive in an extreme world. Fields of strange floating plants fill breaks in the pagoda's dense canopy. It's the territory of deadly predators the size of eagles. The stalkers. They hunt giants. Blue Moon's life forms have been created by some of the world's leading biologists and biomechanists. There's a sort of predictability to life on Earth, which surely we can extrapolate across the galaxy. And even at this stage, we can predict the sorts of organisms will be adapted for living in this thick, viscous atmosphere. Everything about these aliens has been scientifically calculated, from the dimension of their wings, how they might see, to how they could interact with each other on this strange world. Because if you find those, then at least you know there's life there. There are wonderful opportunities for flight here. If you've got denser air, heavier air, it's going to be easier for big things to fly on the blue moon. Amazingly big things. Soaring high above the pagoda forest, are sky whales. With a wingspan of more than 10 meters, they're the blue moon's largest flying creatures. They're feeding on clouds of floating plants buoyed up by the dense atmosphere. The likelihood of sky whales seems very high. They ought to exist. So on the blue moon, 
we have animals which originally were swimming in the oceans. But because the atmosphere in Blue Moon is so thick, one can imagine something swimming in the ocean to flying in the atmosphere effectively as a single transition. It's opening new eyes to the way in which evolution can happen on alien planets. Guided by their sonar, these gentle giants glide on the thermal updrafts. What a magnificent beast this is. A sky whale weighs as much as a rhinoceros. That's ten times larger than the largest thing that has ever flown on Earth, a pterosaur. At the time of the dinosaurs, we had in the sky gigantic flying reptiles. Why was that? Well, one of the best explanations is that the levels of atmospheric oxygen were substantially higher than they are today. There was basically more energy available. These things could get to gigantic size. And so when we go to other planets with similarly high levels of oxygen and also a much thicker atmosphere, not only will those animals be bigger than we're familiar with, but much bigger. Oxygen levels are so high that creatures here will have 50% more muscle power than on Earth. This enables giants like the sky whales to spend their entire lives on the wing. It will also supercharge their main predator, the stalkers, giving them phenomenal flying power as they hunt a pod of whales. Soaring above the forest, the sky whales are safe as long as they stay high. The winds are faster here, making escape easier. The scouts come from a colony of more than 300 stalkers. And they're hungry. The scouts drop down beneath the Pakoda canopy to avoid detection. They're waiting for one of the sky whales to drop its guard so they can single it out for attack. The stalkers have three eyes giving them 360 degree vision, perfect for tracking the sky whales while maneuvering through this complex world. The Cape Stalkers are faster, stronger, and more agile than anything on Earth. Scientists here have modeled their way of life on the social insects. One of the most successful social systems on Earth is one we find in bees and wasps, for example. You have a queen, but you also have workers and other members responsible for different tasks. Now, on Blue Moon, we could imagine something rather similar but interestingly, much larger, because remember, the atmosphere is denser and there's more oxygen. Animals like stalkers would be, in a sense, like giant hornets. They would be divided into a series of scouts looking for new opportunities. But they're also workers and the queen staying in the nest. The workers are faster and stronger than the scouts. They're the stalker army, and they're waiting for the scouts' signal to attack. It's a very, very successful way to run a large colony and also to be very effective in cooperation, and that includes, of course, hunting. On the Earth, 
That same social organization is found not only in the insects, but extraordinarily even in the mammals. Now, if this has happened independently on Earth actually a number of times, then there's every reason to think it should occur elsewhere. The scouts are still doggedly tracking the whales. Ah! 